am dr anjani devi associate professor department of biotechnology vigyan's foundation for science technology and research as you pretty well know that i am dealing with the course enzyme technology and we are presently dealing with the unit 3 of your enzyme technology in the last sessions we have dealt with your the kinetics of single substrate reactions we have already covered the estimation of michaelis menten's parameters along with that we have also learnt about what is the importance of your michaelis menten parameters like km and vmax along with that we have already studied about multi substrate reaction mechanisms and kinetics and we have focused upon the turnover number also in the present sessions we are going to study about the remaining topics of your unit 3 so in the previous session we have discussed about your various sorts of inhibition processes we have discussed about your competitive inhibition uncompetitive inhibition and non competitive inhibition process now we are going to discuss about allosteric inhibition is another type of inhibition process that is nothing but your allosteric inhibition what's happening here it's nothing but some enzymes possesses additional sites i've told you that normally the enzymes will be having a site which is nothing but the active site where generally the substrate molecules comes and binds to it besides this active sites enzymes are also containing some other sites which we are calling them as allosteric sites so some enzymes possesses additional sites other than the active sites which we are referring as allosteric sites these are unique to the protein molecules these allosteric sites are unique sites on the protein molecule moreover there are different types of allosteric substances we are calling them as allosteric effectors allosteric effectors those are nothing but the substances that binds at allosteric sites and regulate the enzyme activity the substances which are binding to the allosteric site of the enzyme and regulating the activity of the enzyme we are considering them as allosteric effectors there are two types of effectors one we are calling it as positive allosteric effectors and the second one is your negative allosteric effectors from the words or the names itself we can understand that the the positive allosteric effectors are those substances which are capable of increasing the enzyme activity whereas the negative allosteric effectors are those which are capable of decreasing the enzyme activity moreover if you see the curve the curve of your allosteric enzymes will be definitely the sigmoidal curve so allosteric inhibition plays a very vital role in the metabolic regulation process so what is the importance of this allosteric inhibition these allosteric inhibitions plays a very prominent role in the metabolic regulations let me explain you this inhibitors are actually not the substrate analogs normally when we dealt with this competitive inhibitors i told you that the inhibitors which are working in this competitive inhibition process they have similarity in structure with the substrate molecules those are substrate analogs but here we are saying that the allosteric inhibitors are not they are not substrate analogs it is partially reversible this allosteric inhibition process is partially reversible process when excess substrate is added to the reaction in this particular inhibition process your km value is usually increased and your vmax value is going to decrease when an inhibitor binds to the allosteric site the configuration of your catalytic site is modified such that the substrate cannot bind to the enzyme no any more so because of addition of this allosteric inhibitors to the allosteric site of the enzyme there are certain modifications in the actual active site of the enzyme because of modifications in the act, actual active site of your enzyme the substrates are unable to move and bind to the active site of the enzyme so if you see the mm plot the mm plots becomes less 
hyperbolic and they are more sigmoidal in nature. See here, this is actually hyperbolic. Normal, in normal situations, in the absence of inhibitors, the plot will be like hyperbolic. But in the presence of allosteric inhibition, you can see the sigmoidal curves. So, this represents the allosteric inhibition process. So, MM equation becomes less hyperbolic and more sigmoidal, which means that the rate of reaction is reduced at lower substrate concentration here. Your rate of reaction is going to get reduced. The mechanism of allosteric inhibition may involve the interaction between the enzyme as well as various subunits of enzymes. That means your mechanism of allosteric inhibitions involves the interaction between the various subunits of your enzymes because of which when if at all you consider and I have told you that enzyme is a polymer, it is nothing but a protein. So, when you consider oligomers, separation of, we just separate the oligomers into monomer units. Definitely, when the oligomers are getting separated into monomer units, there will be, there will be change in your allosteric control, but not the catalytic activity. Your allosteric control will be lost, but there won't be any change in the catalytic activity. As I have told you that, if you consider this allosteric effectors, there are two types of effects. They are positive allosteric effectors and negative allosteric effectors. If you consider, there are allosteric inhibitors are present as well as the allosteric activators. Just consider allosteric inhibitors. Here, what is happening is, just consider the enzyme. Here, the enzyme is having the prominent active site. Because of inhibitors, if once this inhibitor is going and binding to the allosteric site of your enzyme, definitely there will be alterations in the active site of enzyme and the, because of which your substrate is no more going and binding to the active site of enzyme. Because of addition of this inhibitor to the allosteric site of the enzyme, there will be change in the active site of enzyme because of which your substrate is no more can bind with the active site of enzyme. This is in the case of allosteric inhibition process. Coming to this allosteric activation process, once this inhibitor, we have to now call it as an activator. Once this allosteric activator is going and bind with the allosteric site of the enzyme, the active site is altered in such a way that they are going to bind to the substrate molecule. So, there is effective production of your product. I want you people to work out these questions so that you can assess yourself how much you have understood from today's class. Moreover, you can refer to these references. This is a textbook and this is a slide share. So, you can refer these particular references in order to gain more. Thank you.